Today we're going to be painting by numbers. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm a terrible artist. Now you are going to have to just suffer through my drawing during this video, but it, it's gonna be worth it. I promise it is going to be worth it. Today what we're gonna talk about is what is the best knife grind for you? What fits your style? Now when it comes to knife grinds, there's all different things to choose from, okay? We're gonna try to make this super simple, super easy for you to understand. Now the worst thing you can do when it comes to choosing a knife grind is listen to your friends or listen to people on forums because they're not you and a knife grind is going to be specific to you and your needs. So a little example of that, if I was with a bunch of guys who had big jacked up Jeeps and they were going off-roading and I brought a Ferrari, I'm probably not gonna make it too far, yet the Ferrari's, you know, a great car. Likewise, if we get on a racetrack and we're all gonna see how fast we can go and the guys with the jacked up Jeep's gonna try to race me with my Ferrari, it's just, it's not gonna work out too well. Meanwhile, the Jeep has its purpose, the Ferrari has its purpose, and the reason I'm saying this is because knife grinds all have a purpose. So flexing hard online because you broke a knife with a grind that wasn't made to do what you're gonna do is worthless. But let's get to the point, okay? The point is that if you pick the right knife grind for you, it's gonna be all the better. But we need to start with, well, well what, what are the grinds, okay? Now, there's a whole bunch of other grinds, but we're gonna go over pretty much specific to the outdoors here. So bushcraft, survival type thing. Okay, so on one side we have durable knives, and on the other hand, we have sharp knives. Now, that doesn't mean a sharp knife isn't durable and durable, so just bear with me as this, and don't try to read into it all that much, internet warriors. So, what I'm saying here is we have these dura real durable blades, and then we have these blades that are really, really, really sharp. So let's start with the durable end. All right, so you can see that crazy drawing right there. Convex grind, that's what we're gonna start with. We're gonna say a convex grind, super durable. Now the reason for that is we have our cutting edge up here. So super sharp cutting edge. Behind that cutting edge though, you can see in this area, I even brought a blue marker. In this area right here, there's a lot of mass, okay? There's a lot of mass behind that cutting edge. So if we add a lot of pressure from the sides, if we add a lot of pressure from the top, such as chopping like an ax or taking a big butcher style knife and like hacking into a tree, there's a lot of durability behind that cutting edge. Now, although we have a lot of durability when it comes to something like shaving, in order to get the right angle to cut into this piece of wood requires us to take a lot of wood away, okay? Because the thickness here is not allowing us to get our knife as flat on the piece of wood. So, in turn, we can't make as fine shavings or carvings as we can with some other blades. Now we jump to the other end of the spectrum, super sharp. We have something called a flat grind. Now, flat grind looks like a triangle. When we grind it, we go from the spine of the knife up to our cutting edge, just one grind line, okay? So if you look here now, behind this cutting edge, we don't have a lot of mass. Not near the amount of mass that we have behind something like a convex edge. So what that means as we apply pressures, harsh pressures to the tip and the sides, we have a better chance of this thing rolling, chipping, or breaking. But when we come to cutting, carving, slicing, skinning, what happens is this thing begins to really shine. The reason for that is, again, when we put the angle of the knife to our piece of wood or whatever we are cutting, we can get a lot lower angle and it's gonna slice through that piece, giving us very, very proper shavings, very, very proper cuts, and it's gonna be a lot smoother and cleaner. So we have the two extremes, but what about everything in the middle here? Because we still got some space to draw. So let's jump back up to this side, the more robust, durable side. Now we get into something called a Scandi grind, which is a very popular grind for bushcrafters and survivalists. Now by taking my blue marker and filling in here, what you're starting to see is that we don't have as much mass behind our cutting edge as we do in a convex grind, but we have more mass behind the blade than something like our flat grind. Now something like this Scandi grind is going to give us durability. Not as much as convex, but it's still gonna give us durability because we have some mass behind compared to something like a flat grind. 
but it's not going to give us as much sharpness as a flat grind, but more sharpness than our convex grind. So I, I'm assuming at this point now you can see how this little chart here is working. So when we think about Scandi grinds, we're thinking about something like batoning wood, okay? We can baton sticks with ease, we have enough mass and structure behind that cutting edge to be able to take that brute force. We can also use snap cuts to chop down saplings. And then we can also, of course, do shavings and carvings. They're just not going to be as good as some other grinds. Which leads me into the last grind we're gonna cover. That's a saber grind. So a saber grind, we have less mass behind the cutting edge, which is gonna give us technically a sharper edge, but the durability is starting to decrease there as we move on because we don't have as much mass. Now, saber grind is my favorite grind, and I'm gonna explain why, but when we think about saber grinds, we're still looking for some durability there, that if we would need to, we should be able to baton wood if we're selective with it, but we're gonna have much more success with fine carving, shavings and skinning. Now the reason that I like a saber grind so much is because I'm a huge ax guy. So I'm covering two of these grinds and I have a multitude of different things happening when I go out in the woods. My ax is a convex edge, so I can beat this thing up. I can chop, I can cut, I can hack with it, split wood with it, and I don't have to worry about any damage to the blade. But then when it comes down to actually doing camp tasks, such as carving and skinning. I want something sharp, but I just want that little bit of extra durability just in case I don't have my ax with me and I need to cut a sapling or split something. So my suggestion is to look over this. Okay, I'm gonna take a close-up picture of this and post it at the end of the video after we do our little hand thing that we all love so much. And really truly, Think about what you're going to use your blade for. If you're really, really gonna beat that thing up, a convex grind might be for you. If you're going to go out and literally just carve feathers and shavings all day, and you're gonna carve cups and spoons, a flat grind might be where you wanna be at. If you're like me and you're right in the middle because you're carrying an ax and a saw and a knife, maybe saber grind. You need to figure that out on your own and nobody's gonna be able to answer that but you. Now there are other grinds out there, don't get me wrong, there's chisel grinds and hollow grinds and all these different things, but I wanted to stick to these four because these are primarily the main ones that we see at the school here and hear about bushcrafters and survivalists carrying. So hopefully this video sheds a little bit of light onto your knowledge around knives and um, knife grinds and why makers and manufacturers put all these different grinds on because they're all for different purposes. But I can't stress enough at the end of the day, what's your purpose and why are you carrying that knife? What are you gonna use it for primarily? Like what, what is, what's your why when it comes to the knife? And that's gonna lead you in the right direction and get you suited up and geared up with the proper knife for you. All right, and I'm done. I'm done drawing. I, huh, I feel so good about my art and this whole video itself. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. As always, check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com. Until the next video, stay in the woods. Bring a whiteboard, draw, paint, whatever makes you happy. I'm gonna do this and then this will show up at the end to look over it.